Well, for more, I'm joined on the set by our Europe editor, Armin Georgian. Hello to you. Armin, we saw in that report a series of spats between uh, Macron and Maloney. Is this sort of like hopefully them pushing a reset button? That, that seems to be the idea. I mean, this treaty that they're trying to revive, it was mentioned briefly in that report. It's called the Kirinale Treaty, which was signed in 2021. And that was actually the fruit of three years of preparation between the French and Italian governments uh, aimed at a much more dense uh, kind of structure to the whole Italian-French relationship, bringing things up uh, to a kind of not exactly the same level of alliance that France has with Germany, but something a little bit closer to that. Uh, but of course, that was all a, a different period in, in history when uh, President Macron had close relationships with uh, Italian leaders. That hasn't been the case uh, since Giorgio Maloney uh, came to power. And it's not just a question of, of substance, but very much of, of tone as well, a perception that's been quite persistent in Rome that uh, France essentially has, has seen Italy as a sort of junior partner, that when it comes to doing the really big, important things in Europe, uh, France will do those things with Germany and simply pay lip service to to uh, Italy being an important partner. I think that's been a pretty p a particularly prevalent perception in the last few months uh, in Rome. Just this morning, we heard uh, the French government spokesperson saying on French on a French television channel that Italy is our European brother. And yet, as we saw in that report, only six weeks ago, France's interior minister was saying that uh, the Italian leader was incapable of resolving migration problems. So not a lot of brotherly love, uh, particularly in the last few weeks, it has to be said. Yeah. And is migration still the key sticking Point. Well, we have to put that in a slightly bigger context. So this uh, this migration deal that was just touched on briefly in that report, uh, Italy did get some concessions from its EU partners in early June when that uh, breakthrough, as European ministers called it, uh, was announced. There was stricter processing of asylum seekers at EU borders that should, in theory, help Italy, also loosening the definition of what kind of what, what countries asylum seekers could be, quote, sent back to. That's also aimed at relieving this migration pressure on Italy. Uh, but the problem is, firstly, that migration deal has not been finally approved. That was just one stage in the process. There still have to be talks between the EU member states and the European Parliament. So it's a very long haul. And in the meantime, uh, the proof of put the pudding is obviously going to be in the eating this summer. What will solidarity look like, if anything, between EU member states, as in the summer traditionally is when uh, migrant crossings across the Mediterranean increase. Uh, so there's definitely a potential will for more tensions between uh, France and Germany, uh, sorry, between France and Italy as to who should take responsibility for this ship uh, or, or that ship. So it's one thing to have a deal on paper. Another thing is how countries actually behave when it comes to this key question of solidarity that Italy wants from France and other EU partners. All right, Armin, thank you very much. Armin Georgian, France 24's Europe editor.